Hey guys, it's MC Fixit here. We're gonna be taking this T-Bird and uh, adding a little uh, Hulk smash to it. Uh, should look really sweet when we're done, especially because of this color that the green is on this. Uh, this is almost a brand new disc, just thrown once or twice. Uh, when I was cleaning it off, actually, I accidentally took off the little sticker that uh, keeps them separated when they're doing the shipping. But it does have a little bit of stamp wear from being inside of my uh, bag and also a another kind of bag that I had carried it in, in the bottom of my truck. Um, but yeah, we're going to be using stencil hotbed dye here and uh, walk you through all the tools, the supplies, and the details. So here are the tools and the supplies that you'll need. You're going to want to go ahead and get your disc. Uh, this one I chose, it's kind of a greenish yellow. Um, and so that's what I'm choosing um, to do it on. And I went ahead and found mine, added Hulk Smash. Uh, Duff font had Hulk font, so I just took it off of there and downloaded it and then I cut it onto a Cricut. Um, and so you can see it there probably at a pretty severe angle um, and hopefully you're able to, uh, to read it pretty well. And so we will go from there with that. Uh, I did use an Oracle 5160 for that stencil. Uh, then uh, we're gonna go ahead and use transfer paper. Um, this transfer paper comes in a big, huge roll. Um, and actually, you know what? I think I'm probably end up going to end up cutting some new ones because I had some troubles with this last time. So I'll show you how we go ahead and do that in this video. I don't always do that because I just get to use it for like 10 or 12 times. We have a burner. It's right over here. Uh, works really well. 10, 15 bucks, 15 to 20 bucks on Amazon. Uh, works much better than in my house because you sometimes make a little bit of a mess. And so don't want that in your kitchen. Don dish soap and water. I'm a huge fan of it. So I don't have to keep running back to my kitchen and clean things off. Uh, acetone is really helpful. Then you get to choose what dye. We're using eye dye poly. You could use like a purple eye dye poly or a different color like that if you prefer. Uh, I'm just gonna use black because I've been doing it for the last couple of dyes. A funnel um, that went right in the pan. I don't know how, uh, but a mason jar filled with warm water. You take half of the little packet that this thing comes with, put it in there uh, and mix it up. Warm water does help with that. Gloves are really helpful. You're gonna want a scraper tool, some kind of a pick, a Sharpie, a pair of scissors helps you cut. Um, then I use this two speed uh, heat gun. I only use it on speed one though. Uh, then I have this old pan I've used many, many times and works super well for that. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. So, Put your gloves on, get your workspace set up, and kind of get stuff out of your way, which is really, really helpful to do. And so here we go. We're gonna start weeding. That's the first thing I really like to do. Um, sometimes you do pull your disc out too to kind of see how big it is and where it's going to go. So um, anything you want to be black on here, you can have black or it's gonna show up blue underneath. I believe this is a white one. Uh, if not, it's gonna be clear, but it doesn't look clear. So it should be a blue here. So anything you want black, it's going to come out black. Um, and so you just kind of start wherever you want. Scissors are sometimes good on these bigger stencils. Cause once I start here, you're gonna notice it's just gonna kind of keep going every which direction. So just to kind of save yourself some headache, you can do some extra cuts just like that. I'm gonna set this off to the side because we need some new transfer paper. So I'll show you how I do this. Just go ahead and get it out. Uh, I think this is only like my third or fourth time I've ever done this. Um, so it's not something you have to do super often because you have that ability to just reuse this like crazy. Um, because I'm a creature of habit I'm just going to set it down because I can right on top of the old one and just go ahead and start cutting and you can just go ahead and put this back in like so. Go ahead and pull this old one back off. Actually, 
No, not yet. We're just going to steal it a little longer. We're just going to go ahead, we'll do it on the outside so you can see it a little bit better. And just kind of fold it along that beautiful little seam there. And same thing with this one right here. Peel that off. Now you can go ahead and throw that away. We're actually saving this blue one because I like it because it shows up so much better. And so I do put this on pretty thick because the more you scrape it, um, the more it just kind of gets used up. And then if you have a clear disc for what I'm about to do, that works really well. Um, or at least one you can kind of see through. So we could use the original one I have, uh, but this will be a future disc die right here. And uh, just go ahead and get it all aligned up the best you can from side to side. See, I can see almost all the way straight through this disc, which just makes it beautiful to be able to do. And then I always try to make it a little bit bigger because I don't want to write Sharpie all over my disc. And this one's a pretty sweet disc. I can't wait to do this disc die because I've never seen a clear Enigma. Um, and I have a pretty cool idea for it. So stick around. You'll see that hopefully relatively soon. Uh, then we'll go ahead and peel this. from the backing. So you got the crosshairs done and you got the other done. And peel that, throw that one away because that one I'll show you in one second. It's just really hard to see sometimes when you're going fast and doing a lot of different design stuff. The front and the back look almost the same. This one's waxy. If You can kind of see it in the camera because of the lighting, but normally you can't see it that well, um, especially if I'm doing some that are off camera. Uh, and I like to be able to see my disc dies. So uh, I do want the disc to kind of come this direction. So we'll go ahead, peel, and go ahead and place the situation. Oh, I forgot one other thing I was going to take out. I'm taking out this line too. And that will actually help me uh, with my die job to be able to see everything a little better. So, sorry about that. Forgot one piece of what I was going to do. So make sure it's nice and centered and lined up just like so and you don't have to kill it here but we are going to take some time to really make sure when we pull this up the whole thing's coming together and you can see even after the first one it starts to get a little less clear because i'm scraping pretty hard and that uh sharpie does kind of smear on this a little bit but i don't really care okay that looks good to me right now we're going to go ahead and clean up the disc. So I'm going to be using acetone for this. Make sure you have gloves on by this point of the video. And just looking for a nice chunk and back and forth. We'll just eat right through that original stamp. So that's what we're looking for. Uh, then we'll go ahead and do it again. Acetone is very corrosive. It will eat through skin and even plastic. Uh, these gloves get a little eaten up from it as well and so that's starting to look really good there is just a little piece over here i'm going to spend a, just a few more seconds on and sometimes you got to go lots of different directions and i think that looks good right there go ahead and put your cap back on 
And I do want to clean up the disc just a touch. Just like that. Don dish soap water, just to make sure it is nice and clean. I'm gonna go ahead and get out this beautiful little towel and go ahead and fill this up with water. Now this is a fairway driver and so you don't have to put a ton of dye, just enough to kind of get it down on there. And my dye ratio is one of these jars, which is about the same size as the packet, like that. Half of one of these little packets inside of here, um, and then you just mix it up well. Warm water is helpful. You don't even have to have warm water, but it is helpful just to get it going. And then I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on about two and a half. This just helps with spills and everything else because it's very likely you're going to spill at some point, maybe not every single time. This is something I made. It's a little 3D print job I did. This is not necessary, but I like it because it just helps keep me lined up the best I can be. And so, um, and I can kind of scoot it out and off to the side a little bit because that allows my head to go where it needs to go, which is actually really important for this next step. So I know it's all centered a little bit right now, but uh, that's to give me the best view, which I apologize for, but I'm dying the disc and showing you the process. So apologize, but that's just what's gonna happen. So we need to go ahead and peel this. And as we peel it, the hope and prayer is that everything comes up with it. And sometimes you have to flip your flip it over and push it down a little bit more. So just take your time doing this. Pulling it at about a 45 degree angle is what normally works best. Sometimes like natural shapes seem like they're harder to get up or they stick more, um, and then sometimes it's not that. Like sometimes these circles are so hard to get accurate, and then other times they're not. It's very strange, but uh, just kind of part of it. There's that A I pushed back down in there, that little piece I cut that came out. And today it looks like I'm having trouble with some of the handprint part. So you just take your time, go back over it a couple more times, really push it down in there. Sometimes you have to uh, persuade it a little bit in other methods, so don't always like to do this, but sometimes it works and is helpful. Yep, just fold it in half and push down. Sometimes you have to add a little bit of... Uh, go sometimes you have to use like a pick or something i really try to avoid doing that uh this is that what i put on the transfer paper as you can tell like i just saved one of these it's so much better um, than that white one because you can actually see it so i'm going to go ahead and get this thing nice and centered up um, i also like to kind of center my disc up too actually i don't think i need the top piece of that print This is where you really want to be patient. Take your time, make sure you get this right. You only get one opportunity to get this accurate. And especially since it has that circle on it, it kind of tells you if you did it right. And so you just really want to make sure you are nice and lined up, all perfect. And I like to put it down on the center and move it from there to the edges. So you do have the ability of kind of picking it up and re-putting it down. Just be careful not to do that too much. And we will spend a long time getting air bubbles out on this disc. Okay, 
go ahead and start playing it again. So once you kind of have it where you like, I like to go ahead and flip it over. Again, this is totally optional. It's up to you if you do that. Um, I like to, it just kind of helps secure some stuff for me. So go ahead and start peeling this. And I just kind of put it down here. This also helps prevent dye from getting on your rim if you get any splashes, which can happen pretty easily in the pan um, or anything like that. You accidentally drop it in quick. And all we're waiting to do is for this hot pa uh, this pan to start smoking. And it's probably pretty close because it's very warm in my garage right now. And so as soon as it starts smoking, we'll go ahead and pull that off and, well, turn it off. And then we'll pull it off in a minute. You do not want it to boil. You will ruin your disc. I've ruined one disc doing that. So you'll learn once. So hopefully uh, you don't learn by putting one of your favorite discs in there. Uh, potential favorite disc I should say and it's starting right now uh, I had a DD3 that was old school that I put in there and uh, it messed the whole thing up so avoid that at all cost and then we'll go ahead and put that down on here just like so and now we're going to spend probably the next 10 to 15 minutes uh, putting this on here, making sure every bit of air bubble is out, uh, which is a tedious process. I'm not going to lie, very tedious, um, but it is a necessity to make sure this works. Uh, so a lot of times I go ahead and take off my glove for this, at least one of them, kind of like Michael Jackson and... Uh, just use your hands and it works pretty well. You can also use your tools as well, like this will help. Um, be careful not to press this one too hard in. I have torn these before um, and so do be careful, but these, these little tools do help a lot. So whatever kind of works for your situation, just go ahead and do Sometimes, especially how close this one is to the edge, uh, sometimes you have to just go ahead and pull this whole piece off because you've got too many areas where you could have potential. I'm hoping I don't have to do that, but there always is that possibility that I will. And sometimes, if it's like this one, you can very gently pull this piece up and get it stretch how it should be, and then put it down. You just really have to be careful not to puncture it. That was a huge air bubble that I needed to get out, so that one did work pretty well. I might have to take this, this edge piece off. I'm already seeing so many air bubbles, which was not really my plan, but again, you gotta do whatever's best for the die job. But I'm going to try. The other thing you can always do is do a spin die around the edge. If it doesn't do what, it, what you want it to do. Yeah, I'm going to have to go ahead and peel it. There is just so many. So again, this wasn't my original plan, but sometimes you just have to make do with what you got. I should have probably made this design just a little bit smaller, but it's still going to turn out really cool. That was just a whole lot of more I'd have to do, and it was just not cooperating at all.
So this is just where you're spending some quality time with your stencil. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and heat it up just a little bit, number one only. And the friction with your hand really does work really well, getting it to sit and be seated on there. I almost think sometimes it works better than any of the scraper tools I've ever used. Now, scraper tools definitely have their, their use, like right here would be a good place to use one. But overall, just really pressing it in, making that uh, vinyl adhere well is pretty big. And it looks like I just barely cut part of that by accident. So the beauty of it is you can just go ahead and get a little piece. So always keep that nearby. I never try to accidentally cut into any of it, but uh, it definitely is a possibility. I didn't even place that well. Let's cut that one more time. At least one of those edges off. I mean, I guess I could have used the H right there on my finger. That probably would have worked too. But you know, that's life. So sometimes if they're close to the edge and don't want to go out of the edge, I just push them back towards the center, which is kind of a silly thing that it seems like to do, but uh, sometimes it just works. And so it saves you some of that headache as well of it not wanting to kind of go out of the edge. So I just push it right back to the center and call it a day. The last thing I want is this not working well, so go ahead and heat it back up again. And threw the heat gun on the ground, don't do that. Okay, I think that's starting to look good. Go ahead and look at all the different angles. Man, I wish I could just keep it like that. I really like that. Maybe I'll do one of these reverse and have it white other than dye it green. I don't really like to dye things green, but I do have some green dye. Um, one last check on all of it, making sure it's exactly how you want it to be, that all those air bubbles are where they need to be instead of potentially ruining everything. So. We are going to go ahead and stick it down. You're going to go at about a 45 degree angle right to left. Your pan is going to be very hot, so try your best not to touch it. And just let it float in there. I did get just a touch of dye on that rim there. So I'm going to try to soak that up real quick so it doesn't get on there. And we're gonna go ahead and let that thing sit for 10 minutes. Uh, normally I do five minutes, but I do want this pretty dark. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it 10 minutes. Okay, we got this on for 10 minutes now. So I do notice uh, some of the different things did not turn out as well as I wanted them to, uh, but it's still gonna look pretty sweet. Um, that's kind of the beauty of being able to see down in it a little bit. So go ahead and 
drain it and go ahead and wipe it so that right there is good just like that we'll go ahead and put this little guy right back up here and go ahead and spray this down and wipe it one more time to kind of clean it up that also kind of stops it from being activated for the dye uh, then we'll go ahead and peel it up just like that i really like how this one turned out and uh, i'll do it a picture outside so you can also see it because it looks better i think outside than it will in my garage but uh this just allows me to stay out of the elements a little bit uh you can do one final cleaning on it and grab another paper towel and then get a good view of how sweet your disc die job looks. I hope this was helpful. If you do have any questions, go ahead and make sure to put those down in the section below for the comments. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do. That really does help the channel and share these videos with your friends if you like any of my die jobs. Thank you so much. Have a great day.